Hello everyone and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. For some very interesting news um, with Piwa Dianti being confirmed to have left the Sharks or to be leaving the Sharks at the end of the current season and will be a free agent ahead of next season. And the question that does remain, what will happen to the former world player or breakthrough player of the year? Who will pick him up? Will he get picked up? And uh, can he still get his career back on track? That is what we're going to be talking about, I'd say, in this video. And uh, very interesting to see some of the other Sharks depart, which we will mention. And look at maybe where Piwa Dianti might be moving. And and is there is it worth the risk going after him and, and trying to see if you can get him right? So that's what we're going to be talking about. Before we do that, please do smash a like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. So it has been the Sharks Awards. Well, I think it was last night or the night before. And... Um, during the Sharks Awards, they did a uh, obviously a farewell to all the players who are leaving. And uh, we've been able to sort of try and basically get a list together based on sort of the photos we've seen and stuff like that of the official players who are departing. Now, the big name for me on that list is uh, Apiro Zianti, who has not been confirmed what way he's going. So, for example, the likes of Bernard Cock was really confirmed he's going to Ulster. Uh, Buddha Chamberlain's going to the Bulls, for example. Um, Apiro Zianti and, and maybe to less, and Sikh was in Norche, probably the two big names with regards to nothing confirmed as to where and what their plans are. So, what happens now with Apiro Zianti? So, it's, he's an interesting case, isn't he? Because we're talking about a player who is, didn't play rugby for four years, obviously, because of that ban. And he turns 13 August. So age is not really on his side um, in terms of, uh, you know, having multiple years to be able to get things right. But he's not old. You know, he's not old enough to be retiring if he genuinely wants to make a go at, at playing rugby once again. Um, now, interestingly enough, apparently uh, Bulls are after it. And, and uh, I can I can honestly, I can see why, to be perfectly honest. You know, I think Apio Dianti is a player who was at one stage one of the best players in the world. You know, was set to become one of the best players in the world. Um, you then got banned and played four years, and um, we are now sort of seeing a lesser, or maybe maybe a pure Dianti, which is underwhelming. Now, I don't think it's... I think it's far too simplistic to just suggest that, you know, he was um, on performance and hard drugs, and that's why he was so good, and now he's not, and therefore he's not. Because he played a full season where he was being tested, for example. He was completely clean, um, and he was that good. Um, well, I think what we're seeing now is we're seeing how you can't just flick a switch and get yourself back out there and be at the level you once were. It does take time. And I don't think he had um, adequate time to be able to get um, it ready. What I think he needs is like a Curry Cup season, for example. He needs to play seven, eight, nine matches in a row and just play. Um, and he needs a coach who's going to back him and say, listen, I'm going to play you. You know, you're going to get six or seven matches in a row here. As long as you're fit, you're going to be starting. You're going to get 80 minutes. You're going to play rugby until you get to the levels that you once were. Um, and it just takes a few games, really, to, to get things back in line. He's worth the risk. That's what I think. And I think the Bulls identify that. You know, he is worth the risk because if he gets it right, you are dealing with a rugby phenom. That's what he was looking like. Um, a player who can play outside center, play on the wing, deadly step, a hard working, good skill set. Um, and... Uh, you know, despite maybe not being underwhelming at the Sharks, you know, I saw moments, you know, I definitely saw, I mean, he definitely wasn't the player he was at the beginning of the season, um, but I think there were moments, and I was frustrated when, you know, he kind of got benched, we didn't really see him again, because I thought that he was starting to look a little bit like the player of all, he was starting to get there, um, you know, and you look at, um, you know, his minutes, he hasn't played, um, he played in in, in May, um, but he's, I mean, this year he's played four matches, you know, he's and it's, it's, he's played 565 matches across the entire season. Um, so he's missed a lot of games. Uh, he played quite a few games at the beginning of the season. He played a lot in November. Uh, but since December, he's played once in February, once in March, once in April, once in May. You can't play once a month and expect to get back into form, you know. Um, and I think that's been his issue is that, you know, he went to a franchise which was struggling for a start. The Sharks weren't playing particularly well um, at the time as well. And uh, he was maybe part of that shark struggling side. So you got team low confidence, a player who won't have a lot of confidence in the period of You know, he might say he might be, he might say he's in the right mindset, but he's never going to have the confidence he had when he was scoring tries to fund against the likes of the All Blacks. Um, and so I think if you put him in the right environment and he gets the right backing, I think you can still unlock a player there. And as I said, I think he's worth the risk. You know, I think, I, I, I don't know if there's bad blood um, between himself, him and the Lions. You know, I think that's where it all started for him though. I think there are people at the union that know him. Um, and if there isn't bad blood, um, then I think that could have been a really good option for him. But I think the Bulls, 
I worry about him at the Bulls. I don't think he's going to get the game time. I think that's the problem. You know, yes, you know, they've got Kurt Lawrence, uh, Kane Moody, Villalou, who are Springboks, therefore maybe not, might not play as much, but they've still got lots of other options. You know, they've recently signed Sebastian Leclerc. Shavino Jacobs has, 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 has signed a long-term contract. They've brought in Devin Williams, for example. You know, um, they've got lots and lots of different players, Henry Ullman, um, you know, uh, who are not getting game time as is. And uh, I don't see how, you know, Piero Giannis walks in and gets the game time he needs. You know, I think the Lions are in not as much depth. You know, wings, the Lions do generally have wings, though. In front of Mervo Razzapane, for example, Richard Creel. But I don't think they quite have the depth that the Bulls have. Um, and, and so I think that he'd get more game time there. So what's going to happen? We're going to have to wait and see. In terms of other players who are planning of left, Siki Boz and is an interesting one. He is also le left. And no uh, decision or announcement being uh, made just yet of exactly where he's going. Again, I think the Lions will make an interesting decision um, move for him. Uh, Panish Storm is where he's most sort of linked. But John Dobson saying that there's been no conversations held with regards to a potential move. Um, else there, it looks uh, uh, Kern Bosch has obviously confirmed his move. Buddha Chamber has confirmed his move, as has Bernard Cock. Lala Cordier has been leaving the union, as is Anthony Following, the Rue Roots. And it looks like Mary Costa as well, uh, potentially leaving. So those are the Sharks' outgoing players. Not too many players there who are in the, in the main 23. Uh, Kern Bosch, uh, Buddha Chamberlain, probably the, the, and Renner Cock. Renner Cock, obviously, in the 23. Um, but apart from that, not too many players who I think would make the starting 15 uh, tomorrow if they were to play in a final. So, uh, yeah, I don't think too many issues there, with the, especially when you look at the players leaving. You know, you've got a Kern Bosch leaving, you've got an Andre Estes coming. Not, not saying the same, and a Jordan Henderson coming, you know. So, you've got very good replacements coming in for these type of players. Um, so I think it's an exciting time for 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 the Sharks because they're starting to play nice rugby. They're building depth. They've always had the players, but now it's starting to click into gear. Uh, let me know which of those players you are upset to see leave as as a as a as a Sharks fan. Um, and uh, where would you like to see Pio Dianti next season? Do you think he can still get back to his best? Let me know down in the comments below. Smash the like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.